Hi friends, welcome to Pathology Riddles. Today we will be talking in detail about inflammation up to vascular events. To begin with, why do we need to know about inflammation? Because it happens whenever our body is injured, be it a minor cut, sunburn or infections. The organ which is inflamed is given the suffix itis at its end. So for example, in appendix it will be appendicitis, in conjunctiva it will be conjunctivitis, in gallbladder it will be cholecystitis. Let us know what this term means. The term inflammation is derived from Latin term inflammare which means to set on fire. Basically it acts like our weapon system against harmful agents. It tries to activate our blood vessels, cells and molecules to protect the body. So what is the definition? Inflammation is defined as a response of vascularized tissue to injury. It is important to know a few historical aspects of inflammation. Celsus, a Roman writer of 1st century AD, listed four cardinal signs of inflammation. They are rubor, which means redness, calor, which means heat, dolor, which means pain, and tumor, which means swelling. In 19th century, Rudolf Virchow added functio lessa, which means loss of function. These five signs are the hallmark of acute inflammation. In 1793, a Scottish surgeon, John Hunter, noted, Inflammation is not a disease, but a stereotypic response that has a solitary effect on its host. Stereotypic means repetitive. Salutary means beneficial. So it's not a disease. In 1880, a Russian biologist, Elie Mechnikov, discovered the process of phagocytosis. Next, we shall know what are the causes or stimuli of inflammation. It could be infections, maybe bacterial, viral, fungal, parasite or even microbial toxins. The second one is tissue necrosis. The molecule released from necrotic cells triggers inflammation. Next is foreign bodies like dirt, suture or endogenous substances in large amount like urate crystals in gout, cholesterol crystals in atherosclerosis and lipids in metabolic syndrome. It can also be immune reaction like hypersensitivity when normal immune response damages individuals own tissues. But how are these causative agents recognized by our vascular tissues? They are recognized by cellular receptors and cellular sensors. Example of cellular receptors are toll-like receptors. They are located in plasma membrane and endosomal vesicles of the cells. This type of cells which they are present are epithelia, dendritic cells, macrophages and leukocytes. Engagement of these receptors by causative factors produces mediators of inflammation. We also have cellular sensors which are located in cytosol. These activate inflammasome which is a multi-protein cytosolic complex. It increases interleukin-1 production which recruits leukocytes and induces inflammation. Inflammation are of two types, acute and chronic. Let's see how they are different. Acute occurs first followed by chronic. The onset of acute is fast that is within minutes to hours while the onset of chronic is slow that is it happens over days. 
The cellular infiltrate in acute inflammation is mainly neutrophils, while in chronic it is monocytes, macrophages and lymphocytes. Tissue necrosis and tissue fibrosis are usually mild and self-limited in acute, while they are often severe and progressive in chronic. Local and systemic signs are prominent in acute while they are less prominent in chronic. We will first learn about acute inflammation then go to chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation has three components. Vasodilation of small vessels that is arterioles which increase the blood flow. Increased vascular permeability which leads to exudation of plasma protein and leukocytes and e-migration of leukocytes from the microvessels to the site of injury to eliminate the offending agent. The first two are vascular events and the third one is the cellular event occurring in acute inflammation. So what is the mechanism of vascular events? Let's see vasodilation first. As we already learned that the pathogen or dead tissues are recognized by the receptors or sensors and produce mediators of inflammation. One of the main mediators is histamine which acts on arteriolar smooth muscles causing vasodilation hence increased blood flow. This results in rubber and calor. While vascular permeability occurs because of three mechanisms. Contraction of endothelial cells that is innermost layer of arteriole. This leads to increased inter-endothelial spaces. It, it is caused by histamine, leukotriene and bradykinin. It occurs immediately and is short-lived. Second is injury to the endothelial cells. They are necrosed and detached. The injury can happen directly by burns, microbes, or by neutrophils that is leukocytes adhering to the endothelium. This leads to leakage of internal content from the arterioles. Third is transcytosis which means intracellular transport of fluid and plasma proteins occurs through intracellular channels within the endothelial cells. This is caused by vascular endothelial growth factor VEGF a mediator. These three mechanisms cause increased release of protein-rich fluid into the extracellular space resulting in edema that is tumor or swelling. The loss of fluid from the microvessels and vasodilation concentrates the RBCs in the center leading to increased viscosity and slow blood flow. This is called stasis. The leukocytes accumulate at the periphery of the vessels. Now a small note on lymph vessels. Normally the excessive amount of fluid in extracellular spaces are removed by lymphatics. In inflammation the lymphatic flow is increased due to increased vascular permeability. Along with the fluid leukocyte cell debris and microbes are also present. These can secondarily infect lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes causing lymphangitis and lymphadenitis respectively. These are vascular events. We shall deal with the cellular events in the next video. So revise the topic so that you can understand better. Signing out, Pathology Riddles.